But we're going to move on to our next segment, Mark. And we're talking, we're going to move away from Wentz, move away from Goff. Me and Sean have talked about it. Mike Rankin has talked about it. Me and Brandon talked about it. I know me and you haven't talked about Goff Wentz this week, but we've talked about Goff and Wentz so much in the yeah. past being a football podcast. Let's talk about other quarterbacks. And basically the question is, plain and simple, who's going to be the best quarterback in this draft not named Wentz or Goff? It's a good question. Uh, I think that the first thing that's going to come to people's mind is Paxton Lynch. Because he's the other guy who might be taken in the first round, right? I say no, it's not him. It's not him. I don't, I mean, you can see it from the pro day. I mean, when you got a guy have a pro day and he's missing throws in the way Paxton Lynch was missing throws, that's not good. I don't go back to, I don't go all the way down to a guy like Dak Prescott. I don't think of Cardale Jones, the guy who was well known for winning and could have been a first round pick just last year. I have to say it's either a guy like Christian Hackenberg or it's a guy like Connor Cook. And it's not because they're the best quarterback out there. They're going to be, you know, mm-hmm. an absolutely amazing athlete or anything like that. It's just that I think these two guys are the guys who can get into a system and just rock that system. They can just be the best quarterback for that and they can make smart decisions. They can do what they need to do and they can win games with a good team. This might not be the answer of who's the best quarterback. But it's my answer to who's going to be the most successful quarterback and have the best career. If I had to pick one of these guys, if you look at my draft, Ricky, my mock draft, you mentioned it. I got more quarterbacks than most people have in well, the first you, round. You have, like, the only reason I have more quarterbacks than you in my mock draft is I did three rounds. Yeah, in my first round, yeah. I got a whopping four quarterbacks four in the first them. round. Is that going to happen? Probably not. But it makes sense because... I hate to give away my mock draft, but let me do it right here. We get to the end, and the, the Denver Broncos are thinking we need a quarterback. Because who's their quarterback right now? Nobody. Nobody's Mark their Sanchez. quarterback. Mark Butt Fumble and Sanchez. Nobody's their quarterback. And I think Mark Sanchez can get the job done, but he's not going to do great things. I just wanted to say my name of Mark Butt Fumble and Sanchez. Of course you did. Uh, and I think they sit there and they, they realize, because in my mock draft, the Browns did pass on a quarterback. So they know Connor Cook, he's gone. Mm-hmm. In this mock draft as well, Philadelphia Eagles, they don't have their quarterback. Christian Hackenberg, maybe he's gone too. You know, they're they're looking at these type of things, and they're thinking, if we want this guy now, we have to grab him now. We cannot wait. That's why I have a guy like Connor Cook going to a good quality team like the Denver Broncos. And I think, even though Paxton Lynch is surprising people by being, you know, thought of as a number one pick, I mean a first round pick, I honestly think Connor Cook is probably going to go before him. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but I feel like Connor Cook goes before Paxton Lynch because we know what we're getting out of Connor Cook. Paxton Lynch is still a mystery. Yeah, and I mean, to me, there's two quarterbacks in this draft that, to me, I love them. And this is, like I said, outside of once in golf. So if you jumped halfway to this point, and you're like, well, what about Wentz and Goff? We're not talking about Wentz and Goff. Yeah, they're done. However, to me, I really do like Connor Cook. I love Connor. Like, the way I think Connor Cook is going to be our best day two quarterback. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be like Kirk Cousins, because he came out of Michigan State. He's going to be a lot better than what Kirk Cousins has been. That's for sure. Like, Hackenberg is a question mark to me, because... I just I just don't know with Christian Hackenberg. He was so good his freshman year and then not so good his sophomore year at Penn State to where I'm like, oh, I'm kind of shy on you. There's one kid, though, that I think this guy is not going to be the best quarterback five years from now. He may be the third best quarterback from this draft. It's going to go Wentz, Cook, Dak Prescott. And the reason why I say Dak Prescott is this kid reminds me, not necessarily play style 100%, just the kind of whole situation of, yeah, he played on a good team in Mississippi State. I know Kaepernick played on Nevada, who was also a good team at the time. Low round pick. is going to come in, be a backup. I think eventually if he's behind somebody, 
who's not that great of a starter. Oh, wouldn't it be something if Dak Prescott went to Kansas City and then in three years pushed Alex Smith out of a job and completed my prophecy of being Colin Kaepernick? I just feel like this kid is eventually mm-hmm. going to be leading an NFL team and could probably do it for the 49ers. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Dak Prescott, has, he's going to definitely be one of those guys who's that project player. Mm-hmm. Uh, so some teams are going to draft him. But, I mean, there is too much for me to say of the, the not Wentz, the not Goff, you know, he's going to be the best option here because he is that project. It really depends on him going to a team that's going to give him that time to develop, who's got a guy who's either going to retire in the next four years, who's going to be able to get pushed out, uh, you know, it's one of those type of situations. It's also one where he can't go somewhere like, let's say, Cleveland. He can't end mm-hmm. up in Cleveland who's going to draft a good, like a, a top quarterback in two years or one year. He can't go to one of those situations. He has to go to like, you know, the Green Bay Packers, mm-hmm. somewhere where they're not going to probably draft a quarterback because they don't need one. They will let this guy develop. And can I say, I'm going to give you three things. Uh huh. And. I'm here. We're gonna play a little game. Actually, I've All got right. three quarterbacks from this draft class. Here they are: Hackenberg, Cardell Jones, Dak Prescott. I am going to give you the player mm-hmm. that CBS Sports compares the person to. You got to tell me which quarterback they're talking about. You ready for the first one? What are, we're doing: Hackenberg, Jones, and who? Dak Prescott. Okay. The first one: Jamarcus Russell. Oh, oh, Jamarcus Russell. Russell. Who wants to be compared to Jamarcus Russell? Jamarcus. It says compares to Jamarcus Russell. Who do you think it is? Gonna go Cardell Jones. Cardell Jones. Yeah. Jay Cutler. Hmm. Hackenberg or Prescott? Dak Prescott. No, Hackenberg. They're comparing to Jay Cutler, saying, and I quote: "Players with power, power arms, and well-built frames." Hackenberg, Hackenberg and Cutler have similar strengths, but also similar question marks as inconsistent ball placement and pocket awareness can limit their pro ceilings. I'm sorry, Hackenberg, mm-hmm. but I see that comparison and my thoughts on Jay Cutler say you're fucking undraftable. Just don't draft him. And then the last one, because he's the last guy, they com- CBS compares Dak Prescott to Tim Tebow. He's basically Tim oh. Tebow. Wait. Tim Tebow, but they go ahead and say with a better arm motion and can actually throw the ball. So it's Tim Tebow who can throw the ball. So I'll take that over the other two. But I mean, comparing that's like me saying that this is like he's like Aaron Rodgers in the fact that he plays quarterback and throws a ball. Not that he's good. They they say that he's got the same this, that, and then they say, although Prescott has a slightly better arm and more consistent mechanics. Him and Tebow are similar in categories including composure, mobility, Mm -hmm. power, and leadership. And, hey, here's the thing, though. At least Tim Tebow's won a playoff game. Yeah, against the Steelers. Yeah, he beat the Steelers. You know what scares me, though, about Cardell Jones that I want to get in there? What's that? I'm reading, it, and it's an insider article, so if I I decide to post it in the description, because I know some people... On some other videos, I've gotten mad when I mm-hmm. put in the insider articles. If you guys want me to, I will. Otherwise, I'm just going to say this little snippet. John Gruden looked at Cardell Jones and Christian Hackenberg, and he wrote about Jones, that Jones is going to need tough skin. That scares me right away mm-hmm. about Cardell Jones. Because whenever you say a quarterback needs thicker skin, nope, not my guy. Yeah, Not my guy, because the quarterback is going to get... Most of the most, if not all of the criticism, and he's going to be able to have to take it for sure. For sure. And he, I mean, I, I don't understand Cardale Jones. I mean, I understand he was successful for three games, but the guy got benched. He got benched. He and played a total of 11 games job. in two years. He completely lost his job. And we're going to think about drafting him in like round four. Mm-hmm. The guy's not even a starter. Are you going to draft a backup center? No, you're not going to draft a backup center. Why are you drafting a backup quarterback? He's a backup now in college. How is he going to become anything better than a backup? I understand that the guy's got some great skills. Cardell Jones should have came out after last year. He should have. And, it, 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 you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, I, I'm, I'm honestly surprised that he didn't. This is the same kid, though, that had that um, 
that kind of I'm not playing in school. Well, <laughs> he made that tweet, but he is also the same kid, and yes, I'm calling him a kid, that came out and had the basically what the recruits do. Sit at the table, mom yeah. and dad's there. Oh, I'm coming back to play football. Yeah. You know what normal players do? Hey, coach, I'm coming back. That's, yeah. what, that's what the normal guys do that actually give a shit about the team. For sure. Yeah. I, it, it amazed me that he didn't. It amazed me that he stayed. It really did. Uh, it's I, I amazing how it. he didn't have a Tupac's hologram play, but the Tupac's hologram I hear is pretty pricey nowadays. I, I just wonder. I wonder what would have been different. If he came I honestly out, think if he if went he out was last, in year, last year, some some team would have fallen in love with the idea of him, and I think he would have gone in the first round. Mm-hmm. I really, if he didn't go in the first round, for sure second round. I think someone would have fallen in love with him, and it would have been interesting. It really would have. But I, I don't know. I gotta go. Like I said, I think that Connor Cook falls to a good quality team, and I think that that's going to help him out in his future a lot. Because I think he's one of those guys who, if you get him in the right system, he is smart, mm-hmm. he will make the right moves, and he will be successful that way. Maybe not the best quarterback out there, maybe not the greatest of all time, but he will find success in the NFL. Well, this is where I want you guys down below, comment section, let us know who, what quarterback do you like, not named Carson Wentz, not named Jared Goff, who do you like and why, and if you're a team that needs quarterback... What team, other, like what player other than Wentz and Goff would you want your team to draft at the quarterback position? 